Alright, you ready? Alright. Good morning. Nope. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you all doing today? Happy Easter. I'm guessing you can hear me okay? <laughs> okay. Um, it's so good to see you all here. I did want to let you know before we um, get to singing our or have our prelude, um, we are having a week off next week from the parking lot. So instead of being in the parking lot, Kelsey Cress is going to fill in for me and pre-record a service and it will be posted on both Facebook and sent out an email. So look for that, but um, I'm gonna take the week off to sleep a little bit and hang out with my girls. So um, so nothing, no Bible study this week and uh, no service next uh, Sunday. The following Sunday, we will be back to parking lot. So I think, um, before we begin, I just wanted to say thank you to Vicki and to Lou and Andy and to Jenna and all of the other people who have helped out in the parking lot and with communion. Um, I so appreciate it. It makes this so much easier. So thank you, thank you to everyone who's been helping with the services this week. All right, I think we'll begin with our prelude.
All right, we'll now begin with our gathering hymn. is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead to bring you everlasting hope, be with you all and also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. to be people of God. Oh. 
And now let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now read our psalm, Psalm 118, responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of, the, of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord, by the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading for today is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are, be, are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I ter in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, 
he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And today our gospel is according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on, in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place that they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In our reading from Mark, I always think about how the women at the tomb must have felt. So they show up to where just a few days ago, their best friend and their hope for Messiah's body had been laid. And now the tombs open. What is going on? Instead of a body in need of preparation, they instead find an angel. And there is a reason that most angels start their announcements with, do not be afraid, because that's pretty scary and overwhelming when they show up. So they run away from the tomb and they tell no one, even though the angel gave them direct orders, all because they were terrified and amazed. Now the story leaves us with a little bit of a cliffhanger. It ends with them telling no one, and yet here we are, 2,000 some years later. Obviously someone was told. But what I love most about this story is that Jesus sends them back to Galilee. He says, the angel tells the disciples to go back there, and that's where Jesus will meet them not at the temple or in Jerusalem, not in powerful places, go back to Galilee, where it all started. Go back to Galilee, where we first met, where this ministry took place, where you all started to believe. That's where we're going to start this new life again. And that's where resurrection life begins, in the places on the outskirts, with people who are hungry being fed, with the sick being healed, with the outcasts being welcomed, with the unclean being brought back into society. New life is not just what happened at the tomb. It's not an event, but instead an active verb. It means giving life back to people. It means living out resurrection life in our actions. It means witnessing to the story of how everything was changed that day. Now, each one of these readings that we have for today talks of people's encounters with Christ, what they witnessed 
and how it made them different. The women were terrified, but we can assume that they later shared the story of what they saw. In our reading from Acts, Peter is telling his story, what he saw and what he experienced. Now in context, this is just after meeting Cornelius, a Gentile, and he is recounting to them Christ's life story, who he was and how he healed others, how he died and how he was raised. This resurrection life will now include them too. It seeks not just the righteous Jewish people, but stretches out to those who had never even followed the rule, who weren't part of the covenant originally. The grace found in this life means that they are accepted too. It means everyone is welcome. Our second reading, we, have, we hear how Paul recounts his story too. He was a murderer, someone who helped to persecute the, the very people that he later joins. He witnesses how, to how his own story changed through Christ's presence. Maybe not in the same physical sense as the others, but Christ reached out to him too and called him to be an apostle. And so he has heard the stories from others and he saw how their lives had been changed and transformed. And then Paul talks about how this resurrection, about what this resurrection life means for them, how it changes how we live and how we interact with others. And so as I reflect on this empty tomb on this Easter day, on the suffering that took place on the cross just a few days ago, as I thought about what it means to live in this new life, I wondered what our stories are. When have we encountered the same grace or redemption or hope that we see in these stories? How have we seen resurrection life lived out in our own history? And how does that then call us to witness to others? Because at the end of the day, the resurrection was a spark that started a whole movement and it continues on today calling us to action, calling us to seek out the places where life needs to be given out. Who are we called to share this hope with? Who do we need to care for and love, create space for and enact justice for? Because this grace that pours down off the cross washes us and motivates us to share this love too. So what's your story? It began 2,000 years ago with a man on a cross and an empty tomb, but it still shows up for us today. This grace claimed you as a child of God. It speaks of God's presence in times of fear or trouble. It promises you eternal life and forgiveness from whatever is burdening you. And so today we give thanks that Christ has risen that his life was given in place of ours, that his death and resurrection means a whole new beginning for us, that through this empty tomb, we can see the future of our resurrection, the promise that death is not the end, that we will be raised up to, to eternal life. For that, we give thanks to God, and then we go out and share that good news with others. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn of the day.
confess our faith using the Nicene Creed found in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll now continue with our prayers of intercession. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages and reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Especially today, we pray for Bob, Ruth, Doreen, Leona, Erlene, Jan, Sarah, Joanne, Barb, Dot, Judy, Janet, Sandy, Ed, Pastor Mumford, Doug, Joan, Sue, Karen, Nels, Ron, Patricia, Jim, Nick, Brian, Tressa, Denise, Dr. Sion, Cindy, Kay, Jane, Pastor Washell, Bishop Lozano, Iona, Amy, Brian, Betty, Yvette, Rod, Sarah, Jennifer, Zoe, the family of Richard Mando, and the family of Ray. And all those we name in our hearts now, either aloud or in our hearts. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. 
multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join Benedict and all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And in the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us eternal life. And so it, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all of their creatures, and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. For creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all of this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. We'll now pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So for communion today, I will come around with a wafer. I will be masked with gloves on, so we're trying to keep it as safe as possible. Um, so we will come around, I will give you a wafer. Dean will follow with um, little plastic glasses. You can take your own and then keep it and just get rid of it on your own at home so we don't have kind of cross-contamination. If you need gluten-free wafers, we do have that in baggies, um, so that way we don't contaminate mixing when I give you um, your bread. So just let me know and we will get you communion. Um, the risen Christ invites us to this table. Come eat and be satisfied.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you the spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord. The God, the God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We'll now have our sending hymn. Thanks be to God.